Guys, welcome back to Cinema Geeks. You know, we got we doing a little something different today. We're going to review not a trailer, but a video of another YouTuber. Yep. And uh, but, but before we get into all of that, let's give you guys at home a round of applause. <laughs> so, we're going to be uh, checking out a video about Earthling Ed and he fact checks Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson from uh, a, a episode of his uh, Star Talk series. It was, uh, he pulled this clip, I think he pulled like five minutes, I'm not really sure. It's a 13 minute video, but I think it was a little bit shorter than 13 minutes. But it was out of a, an hour long um, um, Star Talk video. And he fact checks him on. Uh, the topic is are plants alive sort of right it's it's about vegan about uh how vegans will eat plants rather than eating it's really meat. about um one particular vegan argument how they say um uh, i've turned vegan to preserve life and uh, neil degrasse tyson's take on that is well plants have lives too wait let's just let's just watch it let's watch it yeah let's get let's get into it we'll okay. watch it and we're probably going to pause it throughout the video because it's a long video longer than what we've normally looked at all right before we get into it though roll the film and now your trailer presentation kill an animal to eat it but you will slaughter all manner of plant life and eat it. In a recent episode of Neil deGrasse Tyson's podcast, Star Talk, Neil brings up the concept of species bias in a conversation that he's having with Chuck Nice. I just want to riff on plants. Wait, can we pause right here? Okay. Um, isn't it species bias if you're choosing to eat a certain species over another, yeah, regardless, regardless of whether or not they're animals or plants? So is it intrinsically biased? It's bias, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, I don't know if there's a lesson in here or insights, but I just have a lot of thoughts. I'm just going to sort of spill them out. Right okay. Now. Well, here's my first thought. Out. Both okay. delicious. <laughs> All right. In an almost parody fashion, Chuck Nice instantly assumes the role of human becoming increasingly uncomfortable about conversations regarding animals and morality. But to be fair to Neil, from this point onwards, he seems to take the conversation in what at first appears to be a very positive direction. Do you remember all of the concerns people had about tuna being caught okay, yes. by nets? Right. And the issue wasn't that tuna were being caught by nets, it was that the nets were trapping right, dolphins. Dolphins. Right. Because dolphins aren't delicious. And, <laughs> and tuna is. <laughs> the fact that we're protecting the dolphins but eating the tuna, I remember thinking to myself, why does anybody care about the tuna? So Neil is actually making a really important point here, which is why is it only wrong to kill tuna when dolphins have been killed at the same time as well? After all, morally speaking, both dolphins and tuna are sentient animals who have the capacity to suffer. So why is Co it not morally pause that, wrong pause to that. Kill Yo, bro, bro, this is Earthling Ed. Bro, do you let? Can we pull up the definition of what sentience is? <laughs> so when you look up sentient, the first thing that comes up is able to perceive or feel things. That That's dictionary. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Able, able to, to perceive. perceive or feel things. Got it. In 1973, Peter Tompkins and Christopher Burr wrote that famous book, The Secret Life of Plants, where okay. they expose... Um, how plants are able to respond to certain things. Uh -huh. Plants are sentient creatures. Okay. So I, I just want to make that clear. When you use the word sentience, they're able to feel. Plants are also able to feel. Uh, when you that. look at a plant growing and you put it in a little pot, it grows where? Towards the sunlight. So if your window is over here, the plant is going to be growing in that direction. That right there is a sentient process. It's trying to get its nourishment. But let's please continue. All right. 
species. But the problem is, from this point, Neil's arguments start to become deeply, deeply flawed. And he starts how making deeply strong flawed, huh? arguments, as you guys will see in just a moment. Please, show me. Because he seems me. to have a real blind spot when it comes to this concept of species bias. And his cognitive Pause it again. really starts to you, show... You're, uh, how are we going to talk about species bias when you are specifically eating one kind of species? You're being biased yourself. You're That's inherently biased. That's correct. He's right. Go itself. But before that, I just want to let you guys know about today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. We don't Skillshare care about that. No, no. Nah, nah. creative pursuits. No, nah, no. Nah. We're not promoting you. We're not promoting you. We're not promoting you. We're not promoting you. For those who would eat the... The tuna, and specifically not eat the dolphin because it's a mammal. So what you're saying is that in the tree of life, which has fungus and bacteria and plants and animals, you have taken this slender branch in that tree of life called mammals. And some people said, no, it's not that they're mammals, it's that they have big brains. They're brains right, they're larger than us. Okay, so now they're that. saying, now we're saying we value them because they have big brains. I'm Richard Branson. Okay, Richard Branson just cutting us off. <laughs> I'm Richard Branson. You don't want to go to space for 500 grand. <laughs> now, firstly, people's species bias isn't along the lines of mammals versus other types of animals. After all, many of the species of animals... You can't we... speak for all people, bro. That's all I'm saying, dog. There's 7 billion people on planet Earth. You can't speak for all the vegans. Please exploiting kills such as sheep, cattle, pigs, and rabbits are of course mammals. Secondly, people aren't against dolphins being killed because they have big brains. It's normally because they're highly intelligent, which yes of course comes as a consequence of them having big brains, but it's not the brain size that matters. After all, if dolphins had small brains but were just as intelligent, people would still object to them being killed in the same way. But whilst Neil is misrepresenting the argument that people use, it is also important to mention that intelligence shouldn't define worth of life, and so that still isn't a reason exactly. why it's morally acceptable to kill a tuna, but not a dolphin. So what? Every why? living thing on Earth. Earth. So, so what? I. I, I just don't understand. So we have humans. We're we're supposedly the most intelligent creatures on planet Earth. With that intelligence comes a responsibility of knowing that I'm going to be eating other animals who don't have the same intelligence as me or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's that's a part of being that higher intelligence. Yeah. With that, we should have a responsibility of not over killing animals mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. over uh, killing trees, deforestation, and all yeah. of that. There's a responsibility that comes with having a big brain or being a sentient being. Is as far away from an evolutionary uh, uh, place from the very first single cell life as is all other life on earth okay so you say oh gray is important for survival oak trees are still alive today boom and boom. they don't have any brains they okay? do kind and they're of. doing just fine all i'm saying is that whatever struggles trials and tribulations we went through as vertebrate mammals okay uh, whatever we went through every single other living thing on this earth has also survived to this point species that is or evolved to fit this point so it so you want to value judge it this is a mammal this has a brain all right but have you stopped and thought about what a tree is? The problem is Neil is viewing every living species as an abstraction. He's removing or maybe overlooking the species specific traits that are important when assigning moral worth to the individual species that we're talking about. Co pause. What, what, what do you, doing, I, I wish really I wish I wish we had Earthling Ed here to uh, elaborate on what exactly you're talking about here. Like I can you just play it back? I, I, I want to see if I can uh, understand what he's saying. 
The problem is Neil is viewing every living species as an abstraction. He's removing or maybe overlooking the species-specific traits that are important when assigning moral worth to the individual species that we're talking about. How do you say it doesn't have moral worth? How do you <laughs> assign moral worth? Same plants don't have moral <laughs> worth. But like, how they don't be looking out for us? But <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure plants be helping First us out all, they're air exactly, and oxygen, bro, they're, right? they're giving us all of the air. The, I, I what? Who are you to give moral worth He's to God, assign bro. to assign He's moral God. worth? Like I, this, I, I I'm, I'm beginning to lose you here, dog. <laughs> I mean, I lost you from the beginning, dog, because you're right. not. Let's go, let's go. In essence, what Neil is doing is he's grouping every single form of life as being morally the same simply because they have life. Pause it! Evolution. What, the, of life. what the hell are we talking about here? What are we, what are we really talking about he's here? He's still talking about morals. Wait, no, no. He's, saying, worth. he's saying that um, Neil deGrasse Tyson is lumping all life in and I, viewing it as the same. Yeah. That's what he's saying, basically. What is... What is wrong with that? Like, I, I don't get it. He doesn't agree. Clearly. How do you not agree with that as a person who's talking about uh, species bias? That's bias right there. You're basically saying, oh, because I'm a human being, I can say, well, you know what? Ants, they don't have a bigger brain as me, so fuck it. We can kill them. Or, you know what? Uh, this carrot was coming out the ground. We just pluck it out of its roots, They're kill not, it, and eat it. Life who, is not important. Who are you to say, oh, Neil deGrasse is doing species bias, but then turn around and say, well, what's the moral worth? Like, I, 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 I don't get it. I don't get it, bro. I don't get it. You're life isn't what's important when assigning moral worth to an individual species. Case in point, Neil talks about oak trees, and he makes out or says that the reason that we view oak trees differently to animals is because they don't have brains. But it's not the fact they don't have brains that's important, it's the fact that oak trees are not sentient. Pause, 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 pause. pause. What are you talking about, dog? What are you talking Now you're gonna be tight, son. You're gonna be angry because as we established before, I, I, I gotta go back. Mm -hmm. This is the, the the book you're talking about. No, no, no. What is what is sentience? The sentience. All right. Able to perceive things, able to perceive or feel things. We've established they they can. You're saying right? You have plants in Africa when they're being eaten by certain flies or whatever. They release a hormone into the air to attract wasps to come and kill the insects that are currently eating the plants. That's crazy. That's crazy. You have other plants throughout the world, but in Africa, in this specific example, uh, there was like locusts that were coming, destroying the trees. Mm -hmm. They released the pheromone into the air to warn other trees deeper into the forest, shit, locusts are coming. Warning them? Locusts Man. are coming. Get your, get your auto immune uh, weapons up. And then the locusts moved deeper into the forest. And by that time, the trees had gathered that pheromone and produced a toxin to stop the locusts from continuing deforesting the place. Damn. That's just one example of sentience. So who They're is this smart. man telling us? That oak trees are not sentient. They're smart. Right. Because life, because oh. life, um, isn't experienced the same way as a human being, does not mean that it's not life. A plant can see. A plant can smell. A plant can hear. All of these have been documented. All of these, all of these have been documented. I suggest you guys read that 1973 book, The Secret Life of Plants. And then come back, watch this video, and, and, and tell me if I'm really bugging. Please continue. Can't suffer or feel pain. That's what makes them morally less important than animals who have brains, yes. Pause this. So essential. Pause this. This guy's, talking, to... this guy's talking about morally less than. Then at the other end is saying, well, that's species bias. How, how can you have it both ways? This man is double talking. Double, talk. Double speak, bro. <laughs> Double this is speak. Crazy.
important thing when assigning moral worth. Not the possession of life, but the possession of sentience. Now, if a living being, animal or otherwise, didn't have a brain, but was sentient and conscious and had subjective experiences, then they too would also be worthy of moral consideration. Pause it, pause so it, pause it, pause it. You if you are not able to understand something, does that make it less than you? No. So because we cannot understand a plant, well, an oak tree in this example, does that make it less than me? Does no. Does make it less than you? No. The, the oak, we have sequoia trees in California that have been around for 200 years, 300 years, some 500 years. It's the fact that the plants can't talk back and have a discussion and say, like, to you, that you oh, would ouch, understand. Oh, ouch, ouch, you're hurting that me. That you would understand. Ouch, you're hurting me. That That's why we feel, oh, they don't feel any pain. That's, you're just taking it on your... Exactly. You're taking it through your human experience, yeah. not taking the time to say, oh, well, you know what? Life comes in different shapes and sizes and different forms because you can't tell me that a plant isn't alive. It's literally what's keeping humans alive by taking our carbon dioxide and turning that into oxygen so am i am i bugging am i am i am i bugging here he's over here talking about species bias but then saying well they're morally less than than humans so what do you so we gotta kill them all i'm saying is it gotta eat them it's it seems it seems hypocritical to say oh well i'm gonna eat animals because uh, or i'm not going to eat animals because they have sentience and turn around and eat all sorts of vegetables and fruits and ignore the fact that plants have sentience as well that's you will not kill an animal to eat it but you will slaughter all manner of plant life and eat it so you're okay with that but not eating the animals. You have judged that your side of the tree of life is more important than this other side of the tree of life. Yes, we are creating moral distinctions between animals, plants, and other life forms, but because of the reasons that I mentioned before, primarily sentience. Pause. We basically <laughs> See, it's like, I, this, but this sentience. Is, this is, like, that's just so, I feel as though, like, you're not even doing the research. If a vegan really wanted to be vegan, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. If you really wanted to not eat animal products because they hurt animals, then you should not be eating plant products because they're potentially hurting plants. And because the plants can't just say, ouch, you're hurting me, does not mean that you're not ouch hurting them. Okay? What this guy is doing is basically standing on this moral high ground well plants can't communicate so i can eat them what neil degrasse tyson is saying is incorrect because plants don't talk to me plants don't plants don't communicate with me therefore plants don't feel plants aren't sentient when again i've listed several examples of how they can be deemed as sentient Anybody or anything that is currently alive, like Neil deGrasse Tyson is saying, has evolved from back in the past to be here today to preserve their life. No, nothing in the universe wants to die. I, I, I don't think so. So it just seems very hypocritical yet again for special ed to be coming over here saying all this please continue all right well what about the smallpox microbes all right how do they feel about this exactly the smallpox microbes don't feel anything pause how this guy is talking so matter-of-factly the smallpox microbes don't feel they got no feelings bro bro i, I that's why Ant they hop from body to body to, <laughs> exactly. to, to, to self-preserve themselves. That's exactly. why. Exactly. They're trying to survive. They're trying to survive. If you went into Ant-Man mode, down into a molecule, and saw these microbes, and you could communicate with them, I'm pretty sure you'd be having a different discussion. As long as you can communicate with them, oh, shit. Well, it, 
Now it changes everything. But because you can't communicate with those can't hear them plants, saying, ow, that hurts. Don't kill me. I'm pretty sure all the plants in the background of this man's video is like, ah, here we go. It's fucking <laughs> Ed. Like, oh, this guy. He's still talking about us. Like we, oh, like we. They're like, damn. Him. We move so slow. We can't run out the room right now. <laughs> exactly. So we gotta sit here and be, you know. He's just cringing. He's making cringy points yeah, for that, all of us. Where's that cringe graphic you <laughs> exactly. used earlier? Exactly. Put that on the screen for the whole 13 minutes. Shit is crazy. They are microbes. They don't feel anything. They're not conscious and they're not sentient. Who are you to say that? So desperate to justify killing animals that will question the morality of wiping out microbes and safeguarding children from deadly Pause. diseases. First of all, I think he just put a word in Neil's mouth. Because what? what did he just say? He said, You're so desperate. What did he. Unless I heard that wrong. Play that again. The morality of wiping out microbes and safeguarding children from deadly diseases that will question the morality of wiping out no, no. don't feel anything they're not conscious and they're not sentient are we really so desperate to justify killing animals that will question the morality Pause. of wiping out mm -hmm. microbes and safeguarding children from deadly diseases excuse me he didn't put words in Neil's mouth but he was just making that statement that we're so desperate to, but to save animals. he is putting words in Neil's mouth because I don't believe Neil started this discussion with the intent to say, I'm going to justify animal yeah. murders. He was simply making the argument that for the vegans who are vegan because they don't want to kill animals, yeah. it is hypocritical because you are killing plants. That is his argument. Mm -hmm. He's not trying to make an argument saying, well, you know, it's right to kill a pig or it's right to kill a chicken. He's just saying it is hypocritical when you are a vegan out of preservation of animal life. You're just comfortable killing animal life. That's all he's saying. I mean, where does this take us? Should we not take antibiotics because bacteria are alive? No, you Should shouldn't take antibiotics. Because cancer cells are alive. I'm not, I'm not landed anywhere. I just think about all of life and all the struggles that life had to go through to get to where it is today in the tree of life, four and a half billion years after life began. But Neil, you're being disingenuous here because you have landed somewhere. By the fact that you eat animal products and therefore pay for sentient beings to be killed needlessly, by that fact alone, Pause. you have Pause. landed somewhere. This first of all, I'm first pretty of sure all, he first. eats stuff made out of plants as well, fam. <laughs> what? He just said I didn't land anywhere, meaning he'll eat meat and he'll eat plant products. What did you not understand? He's just... See, this video, he's just so... He's trying to prove him wrong. So exactly. he has to pull out stuff. But he's also hurting himself because... Neil clearly said he didn't land anywhere. He, he's all And he fence. never said, like, I he, don't eat anything plant-related. Exactly. The, I, I, uh, this man right here, man. It, he's like... He's seeing something that is not there. He's seeing words that Neil deGrasse... He's trying Tyson to make said. an argument. That's what he's doing. But he his argument but, as well has But he's saying that. that Neil deGrasse Tyson is being disingenuous. Yeah. When you're being disingenuous, Ed... You are being disingenuous. Or just overlooking shit. You're 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 uh, casually dismissing the fact that this whole thing started with the vegans who uh, want to preserve animal life. You're overlooking that, and then for you to say um, uh, it's wrong to kill animals. To you, it may be wrong, but to some family out there, that's dinner. That's nutrition that's, to them. That's dinner. Just like when you look outside and you see a tree, you're like, yo, that's dinner. That tree wants to run away from you, bro. Exactly. But it can't. <laughs> it can't. It, it can't. moves mad slow. <clears throat> idea that you're discussing right now is precisely because you have landed somewhere and you're trying to justify where you have landed. When I eat lettuce or cucumber, I'm thinking, uh, you know, like as they say with the Native Americans, I, I'm thankful to the plant. And in the same way, I'm thankful to the pig or the cow or the, you know, Chicken. whatever else. Yeah. These are things that were alive. Neil keeps conf... Come on, commercial. Yo, doing all the Bob Burton under. What is the Bob Burton doing? So he's doing a master class. Is all right. We're not, we're not <laughs> cinema geek in the master class. This is a commercial. With sentience. <laughs> and Neil's argument basically goes, well, everything is alive. 
Therefore, I'm morally justified to kill anyone pause. and everything. And pause, why pause, pause. You see, this is what I'm saying about him putting words in Neil deGrasse Tyson's mouth. Nowhere did he say that he's morally justified in killing animals. As a matter of fact, all he's saying is, because we've I'm all aware. preserved life, yeah. it's it's fair grounds to, to eat anything. Yeah. As long as you're aware that yeah, you are eating something that is sentient. Yeah. That's what he's saying that he's aware. Like he's saying that I'm thankful for this this the lettuce I just ate from the wherever it just came from the plant or wherever from it just came from. From planet Earth. As <laughs> well just as well as he's thankful from this pig or bacon or, or, or meat cow, or beef, whatever, yeah. From the cow it came from. He's saying he's thankful for all of it. Exactly. It's not like, justifying it, it, uh, of that he's killing this over something else. Like he's you know? He's just thankful that he has something to Thank eat you, yes. and sustain his body yeah. so that he can continue living. Living life is 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 a is a dichotomy because with that as you continue to live, you are going to be destroying other lives. Uh, yeah, yeah. All those roaches in your house, boy. <laughs> but you're not eat, oh, it, well, you're not know, killing some, them? There you are just, probably some people that eat roaches as a delicacy. Sure, sure. But I'm just so, saying <laughs> you're letting them live. I can't do it. I would yeah. squash a roach if he was that in my true. house. That's true. Exactly what Spiders, I'm saying. <laughs> all roaches, of them. All of that. Even all ants. Of, like, you see all, ants. You stepping on I'm ants. I'm stepping on them. Mosquitoes. And I, I'm not justifying what I do. I feel morally wrong. But, hey, if it's in my house, the nigga not paying rent. Nah, oh, come about rent, that life. Bro. He's like, oh, yo, what? <laughs> well, probably because Neil consumes tuna. And so by consuming tuna, he has at some point realized his species bias by the fact that he would consume tuna, but not dolphins. Now, this leaves Neil with two options. The first option is he can obviously recognize his species bias and stop consuming tuna and instead just eat plants. Or alternatively, Neil can try and find a reason why eating plants is morally the same as consuming tuna, pause, dolphins, pause, 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 pause. Actually, he has three choices because he could eat the dolphin too. He could eat the dolphin. He could eat the dolphin like the tuna. Be like, yo, it's in the net. Let me get a beat. Let me get a piece of that. He could eat the dolphin. All right. I, I'm, I, I'm just so lost. Like, is this guy, like, listening to what Neil deGrasse Tyson is saying? And it's... I feel, as though he, I feel as though... Are there laws about not killing dolphins? Um, I'm pretty sure there's laws about not killing animals. Yeah, okay. So, I guess maybe that's why. But does that... But then that's going into what the laws are, right? Now it's like, why? Why and the laws morally justify different killings of different species actually too though so i guess you got to go that but it's like the laws ain't god the, the laws are not god or mother but nature you know everything so. here is from uh the community this yeah. is what society, society sets society like says yeah look man like i'm pretty sure if a roach was in your house right now or some spider landed on you the first <laughs> you thing you're it. doing is who who and if you happen to kill the spider, <laughs> that's funny. If spider did come down, he was like, oh, 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 my bad. Let me just edit that out. <laughs> anyway, like I was saying, we should I'm, always keep all animals safe. I'm just saying, like, what you're saying is, like, you're trying to stand on this moral high ground, but you're overlooking what Neil deGrasse Tyson is simply saying. Plant life is sentient, dog. But you fail to acknowledge that so you can justify your reasoning to continue eating plants. And that's okay. Nobody's saying don't eat plants. Just understand that you're being a hypocrite when you choose to only eat plants. You're exhibiting species bias. Okay. You're, you're exhibiting, uh, what was that other thing? You're setting the moral value of what is wrong to kill and what is not. You're playing God, B. So stop it. Stop it. Let's finish it. For that matter. And unfortunately, as I quickly realized when I watched the video for the first time, Neil opts for the latter. He makes the justification that morally it's the same to eat plants and animals because plants and animals both have life. And unfortunately, he's overlooked the sentience of animals, which is no, why he's No, B, you overlook the sentience. And if we you use overlook Neil's it. arguments and logic, well, then why is it morally objectionable to kill a human? Why is it morally wrong, therefore, for so a society to deems it to a be. human over chickpeas or dogs or cats or pigs well, or pause. cows or even dolphins it and tuna? Why is it morally wrong for the cannibal to consume the human? After all, the human and every other species I just mentioned possesses life. And if we use Neil's logic, it, 
even further, is it now more morally permissible for the cannibal to consume a human if the cannibal gives thanks to the human they're about to consume? Because that's the logic that Neil uses, so why can't a cannibal use the same logic? Pause. And then As a matter of fact, yes, yes, B. If a cannibal was to come in here and and eat you and me <laughs> give and give thanks, he did what he had to do. <laughs> we gonna go to jail. Though, I right? mean, he no. is going to go to jail because the he society killed, deems that you broke the law and you killed human beings. Yeah. You killed somebody as yeah. a part of your own species. If if dogs are running around killing dogs and sequoia but they don't tree, have dog jail. <laughs> put the dog in jail. I'm, I'm just saying you don't see dogs <laughs> running around killing other dogs of the same species or sequoia trees to eat. I mean, killing other sequoia. But trees. are there not? I don't I'm know about sequoia sure. trees, but are there not dogs killing other dogs just to eat? I don't know. Uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure that All it right. happens. Um, right. I'm just saying, like, yeah, B, the cannibal would have a, an argument to make. But if a motherfucker tried to eat me, I would kill him. The same <laughs> way I would kill a plant I'm to eat it you, and you kill an animal to eat it. One of us is getting eaten. That's all I know. I wouldn't eat the cannibal. All right, my I'm just protecting myself. In the case myself. of the cannibal choosing a human over chickpeas, I'm sure the argument that Neil would use is that the human is sentient and conscious. The chickpea is not. The human suffers when the cannibal chooses to consume them, whereas the chickpea doesn't suffer. The How do you know that? The human is sentient. How do you know that? I'm not saying. I, I heard <laughs> I'm hurting. Stop eating me. Moral worth. Oh, that's what he deems as moral worth. What? This is the if you can feel hurt and pain. And but you can't say that a plant can't feel pain. Animals no, 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 no. like humans are conscious, sentient, and have subjective experiences, which includes pain and suffering. If it's not morally acceptable for the cannibal to choose the human over the chickpea because the human is sentient and conscious, then it's not morally acceptable for us other humans to consume the cows, chickens and pigs over chickpeas because cows, chickens and pigs are sentient and conscious. But I you cannot tell me for a hundred percent fact that a chickpea isn't feeling anything. So I don't value judge one life over another based on its proximity to us on the tree of life. I view all life as sacred, which is why I choose to kill Hold on, pause this real quick. of life as possible. And again, he when you're pulling sacred. when you're pulling plants from the tree, a banana from the ground or an apple from the tree, you're killing the apple. The apple tree is alive. When you pluck that fruit, you killed it. But the apple is going to get rotten, though, at one point, though. It's going to get rotten. So you got to, you know. It's like I the mean, apple. the animal is going to die eventually, I mean, though. But an apple dies quicker. Apple is going to die within, like, weeks or days, right? So, you you know, you might as well just eat the shit, right? Oh, that's crazy. That's species bias right there. Because it's going to die quickly. That's hey, crazy. Man, I'll eat anything besides human beings. That's just my uh, my my choice. Oh, you're going to have oh, gator food. bits and gorilla gator arms? Bits? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not everything. <laughs> Maybe not everything besides human, right? But yeah. Let's see what else we about this. And that's a straw man argument, Neil. The reason that people abstain from killing animals isn't because of their proximity to us. It's like I've said before in numerous times during this video. Sentience, consciousness, and the capacity to experience Damn, you know what's crazy about that? With his logic, if he if an alien were to come here today and th and you like shot it in a leg and it never did anything, you'd be like, Oh, you don't experience pain. So <laughs> exactly. I'm gonna eat you, bro. <laughs> exactly. I'm gonna he's eat just, you. He's justified in doing it. I'm gonna eat he you. didn't he didn't say ouch, he didn't complain when I ate him. He, he don't he he just, he he don't ate suffer. Him. He's not he suffering. don't suffer. So if a person with a brain that has like a malfunction where they don't feel pain they could get their arm cut off. They don't feel pain. Is it, is it okay to eat him? I don't know. I guess because not. he doesn't feel I guess, pain. I, mean, I guess so. I don't know. I don't know. But, but then he may be like, oh, he's a person, so he's sentient. Like we're. But sentient. he's not experiencing he's not pain. Not experiencing pain and suffering. And right? suffering. So uh, what's mm -hmm. up? What's, what's going on? Ed. <laughs> he ain't feeling any pain. That's why we're against needlessly killing animals. Pause, so pause, pause. Logic, nobody, no, no, nobody in this video, not even Neil deGrasse Tyson, yeah, we don't, is justifying so needlessly sleep, killing yeah, animals. Yeah, yeah. Nowhere in this video did anybody it's mention. It's always so self preservation. Pre oh my God, what the hell is Preservation. The yes, that's what we're doing. We're doing it to feed and consume. We're not doing it just to do it. Back in the in in the days, the 1600s, when buffalo 
buffaloes are running around. North I mean, America. like for hunting, you're talking about? Yeah. You're about to get a hunter. You would have a Native American tribe kill one or two buffalo, yeah. and that buffalo, those two buffaloes, would be used for the entire village to eat, make clothing, wares, build stuff for their houses. They would use everything about for the animal. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until the Europeans came and started mm-hmm. slaughtering the, the buffalo and overhunting mm-hmm. that the buffalo almost nearly went extinct. Oh, nobody shit. is Drop saying that. Drop that knowledge. Nobody is justifying needlessly killing animals. We're just saying if you're going to kill animals because they are sentient, then maybe you should think twice before eating vegetables and fruits because at one point they too were also sentient, okay? The the roots in a in a in a plant that contains what is known as their brain. It is through the roots that they're able to produce nutrients that go into the plant and the flower and all of that. How different is that from your neurons, and, I mean from your uh, veins transporting blood to your heart or uh, food to your liver? Like, what, boy? Come on. On the road and a dog runs out in front of your car and you have two choices. The first choice being running over the dog and killing them or the second choice being swerving onto a bed of roses or and stop. saving the life of the dog. You just By stop. Neil's arguments and logic, morally, both those actions are the same. If we choose to run over the dog intentionally when we don't have to, that is the same, morally speaking, in Neil's eyes, as swerving onto a bed of roses to save the pause, life. Pause, pause, pause. No, that is not what Neil is saying. That is not... If if this is what you took away from those small tidbits of videos you showed to me and the rest of your audience, boy, you were not listening to what Neil deGrasse Tyson said. You already formulated in your head your argument, your conclusion, everything you had to say and are now saying it to fit your narrative nowhere in this video is anybody justifying running over a dog that would be wrong he's trying to make an example but he's reaching he's reaching hard cutting a cow's throat or cutting the grass according to neil's argument which is that all life is sacred cutting the grass is morally the same as cutting the throat of the cow. Yes. And even yes. If the arguments were more yes, B. Because of the feed that's used to feed animals, and because animal farming is the number one driver of rainforest loss and habitat destruction, vastly more plants are killed for a non-vegan than they are a vegan. Pause, so pause, even pause, morally killing pause, pause, pause. First of all, um, first of all, wrong, B. If you have a, a thousand pound bison, the the bison's body was built to eat grass okay so he could graze on grass all day and stay a thousand pounds and be good if a human being was to eat grass at a hundred pounds the same amount as a bison he's going to die okay he's going to die would it, would a human really a human can uh, survive on just eating grass and water? No, he's not going to survive. Really? The mm-hmm. you you're not getting proteins. You're not getting any mm-hmm. of the other um, grass nutrition. Grass proteins? Oh shit. Some the cows. I mean th- those uh, digest. Uh, I'm sorry. Those grazing animals. Mm-hmm. Their digestive system, system has evolved to for the point it, where they can okay. exactly get extract the protein and all that uh-huh. the human being digestive system is not built that way mm-hmm. we get our resources from the cow that done ate the, the vegetables <laughs> done ate the vegetables and now we can process the 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 fuel that fueled the bison that will now fuel us you mm-hmm. understand what i'm saying okay i mean chickpeas have protein right that's protein right yeah, but I'm I'm talking about eating grass okay. like on the ground. If you have a mother hundred pound person on the ground eating grass, I hear you. it's not gonna do the same thing. Meaning I, I say all that to say that you're not going to need um five thousand acres to feed animals. Yeah. Then plants was the same as killing animals, we would still be morally obligated to be vegan anyway. 
because by being vegan, we actually result in less plants being killed as well. So ironically, Neil, in an attempt to debunk veganism, has actually made an he argument in favor of veganism. veganism. And if Neil actually lived by the principles <laughs> this, this, of this He's just trying to make his thing. argument. Exactly, he's yeah. like all well, over the place vegan. vegan anyway. And look, whilst this video is undeniably frustrating, it does point to a really significant positive. What? Which is that Neil is actually thinking about his own species bias. I think about it all the time when I prepare preparing food. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I don't want to be speciesist. And so yes, it's annoying, and yes, it's frustrating, and yes, Neil's logic is really, really illogical. How? When you're literally making up points. He didn't say anything illogical. <laughs> dude <laughs> said, I'm thinking of plant life also. Dude. Whatever. He's trying to make YouTube content. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess so. With his own species bias. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All right. Cool. Well, that was that. What do you guys have to say? Yeah, what do you guys honestly, have to say about this? Do you, do you guys think it's bad to, Earthling to and kill plant life? Or as bad to kill plant life as it is to kill uh, animals, livestock, or however you want to word it? Let me just surmise it with this, okay? Life throughout the universe is sacred. May it be an ant's life, um the sequoia tree, an oak tree, a human being. Life throughout the cosmos is sacred. Is it wrong to kill animals? I don't know. I don't know if it's wrong to kill animals because our bodies have progressed to eat and digest animals, meaning we can do it. Are we supposed to? I don't know. What I'm getting at is we are all on this journey in life together. Will I feel bad when I kill a pig to eat it? Yes. But I'm not going to put the pig's life over the Amazon rainforest that provides oxygen for 7 billion people on planet Earth. They're both valuable. They are both valuable. They both aid in my existence here on planet Earth. They both fuel me. Um, yeah, man. Like I, 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 I feel like what his argument. I feel like a part of his argument, which is me also making an argument out of something that he's saying, and he probably wasn't actually saying this, but if I were to do what he did by like twisting his words around to make an argument to say like oh he's biased i feel like the fact that he, he kept bringing up oh it's immoral to kill something that you can feel that feels pain and suffering it's kind of like it's kind of kind of like a, a serial killer in a sense where like a person who preys on like kids maybe right mm -hmm. not even a serial killer maybe like a pedophile why, why a lot of times uh, pedophiles like to go to kids because they're just too naive to understand the situation so it's like him saying oh I'm eating plants because they don't they can't sit they say they're suffering oh that's like a pedophile saying oh I like to lure kids in because they can't say that oh this is wrong this exactly is, it's kind I, of like so are you picking okay, on I, the weak bro I, I, exactly, so exactly. so you're you're hyping up the fact that you pick on the weak because just because you can't understand a communication of a plant saying I'm suffering when you're eating it shouldn't justify you for eating the plant over something that could say that, right? So it's like, oh, you're just, you're just a little, huh? Exactly. I'm not exactly. trying to call him by a bit, but I'm just saying the logic is there. Like, oh, so you're just trying to pick on the weak to eat. Exactly. Mm. That that literally pick on the weak to eat because this, they don't have a voice and can't say, Damn, oh, bro. you're hurting me. I'm we I'm okay. I'm okay and I'm justified we in eating. Earthling Ed. There you have it. Alright guys, let us know what you think about this video. Let us know what you like to do. Are you a meat Am I person? Bugging? Or are Am you I a bugging? plant person? It don't matter. We love all of you guys, you know? Um let us know down in the comment section below. And uh yo, if you haven't already, go like this video. Go like the other two videos that we made this video on top of. And um, uh, subscribe.
Hit that notification bell as well as good for your health. This is Cinema Geeks. We out of here. Peace. Suckers, these hot dogs are gonna make America great. Hey guys, I don't know if you heard, but Waves Club YouTube channel is splitting up into three different sections. You're gonna have Waves Club for all your comedy skits, then you're gonna have Press Play University for all your dope educational videos, and then we got Cinema Geeks for all your film related and media topics. And this will all be called Waves Club.